Well, when you look at the old crockery water, such as the James Way or any of these crockery chicken waters here, they date back into the early 1800s. Yes. Most of them were used in the latter part of the 1800s on small poultry farms. And when we talk about a farm there, that meant that our mother or our grandmother had 50 or maybe 60 baby chicks, and that was it. Yes. And some of them, then they would graze them on up to eat, and some they would let them go on into the laying stage and pick the eggs and have them hatched, you know, and to, yes. to continue their farm. So what you'd do then, you would use them for waterers. They would uh, furnish the water for them. However, they were also used as a uh, buttermilk feeder. And uh -huh. people want to know why they use buttermilk. Well, you had fresh milk that you milked the cow this morning. You had a couple of days of uh, good fresh milk, and then it began to not taste very well. And you'd churn that milk then in a, a crockery churn in most cases. And then from that, you would uh, reap the butter off of it, and you'd have buttermilk. And that was really good for a couple of days, and it began to taste bad again. Yes. And that's when you would give it to the chickens in. Remember, the cow was giving you milk, fresh milk each day, so it didn't take it long to accumulate. Buttermilk not only was a good substance for the uh, broilers or the laying hens, either one, because it was high in calcium and also high in protein. Mm -hmm. So it was a good way to get rid of your milk. It was a good way to feed the chickens. So we're talking about very poor people uh, in the early uh, 1900s. And then if we look at the industry then, we see that uh, World War One's coming on. Shortly after World War I, we had World War II. And at that time, the government took all the cotton and all the steel. So there still wasn't any feeders or waterers made out of uh, that uh, type of steel material or galvanized metal, we call it today. And that's what you're looking at here. This feeder right here, or waterer, it would have been produced after World War II. Now, glass came along, as you can see, the glass water is right there. Yeah. And they were used after, uh, even before World War II, but mostly afterwards, and they grew up into the 1950s and some 1960s in some uh, instance where people were still had small broiler farms. Okay. Now today, all of them are raised on nipple waters, as most people will understand then. Yes. James Way was an old equipment company. Yes. Not only did they make it in crockery, they made it also in glass and in metal and so forth. So they've been around a long time. Most of my life was spent in selling uh, equipment. And uh, from that, everything that I worked in was plastic and steel uh, yeah. in the latter part then. Much uh, cheaper, I imagine. That's right. Yeah. Now, some people might recognize this water right here. It was sold by Sears and Roebuck Company, which uh, later became a big clothing company. But yeah. they were really strong in uh, uh, farming equipment in the early stages of uh, the history here then. Yeah. So, World War I plays a big part. The Great Depression in the United States caused a lot of it. But yet today, we're feeding a tremendous amount of hungry people around the world. Yeah. And as I go back and look at my uh, history of my life, uh, raised on a broiler farm, I uh, worked in a, for a broiler company, hauling feed, hauling baby chicks, and whatever it needed to be done, we can look back and say, we fed a lot of people. And yeah. that's really what it's all about. Yeah. And I don't care what part of the world you're in today, you know, that's still the whole thing is to feed people. Feed your own family yeah. and send your kids to school and so forth then. Yeah. So that gives you a little idea of what we're looking at here. A lot of different designs in the crockery. Yeah. And crockery around the turn of the century was very cheap. This water back in the late 1800s would cost uh, our grandmother 15 or 20 cents. So oh. you can see that yeah. they were cheap. But she didn't have any money to start with her. That's how poor they were back in those yeah. days then. Yeah. That gives you a little idea of what this yeah, is all that's about. Wonderful. This is a 40 year collection of mine that I've uh, enjoyed collecting and I still enjoy seeing each year when I come to Atlanta <laughs> to the show because it's stored here and it belongs to the U.S. Poultry and Egg today. Yeah.